Hello, uh, so my name is Morten Bensberg. I am the Dean of the Faculty of Performing Arts at the University of Stavanger. But um, I think I'm here because I have a past as a kind of an activist and uh, entrepreneur, uh, mainly in the area of conducting and conducting education, but also then um, in digital learning, since we started using digital learning environments for conducting a few years back. And this is what I'm telling you about today. But first, I do want to show you a video. Okay, well, I, I, I wish I could accept any applause for this, but this was uh, the Stavanger Symphony Orchestra with the chief conductor Christian Vasquez, and this was the end of the first movement of Dvorak's Eighth Symphony, for those who are interested. But um, my question here is then, so this utterly analog um, um, business of conducting, or act of conducting, this, it, it's, a, it's such a human act. So how do we... How do we convey this meaningfully in a digital environment. And then my rhetorical um, answer here is, yeah, well, let, let, let me tell you this. Um, um, at the University of Stavanger, at, the, at our faculty, we have had <coughs> a conducting program going with roots back to the 1980s, mid-80s. And uh, we have uh, mainly been... Uh, a regional, a regional uh, factor, uh, teaching uh, musicians and um, conductors in the region. Uh, one of our main um, programs has been the continued education. So this is a part-time program in not non-degree where, where conductors can go, go and get continued ed in, in conducting. And this we have had since the mid-80s. And as this... Uh, graph illustrates, it's been a very sort of linear uh, development. In 2010, we had three conducting students at our faculty. Last year, we had nearly 40. And this enormous disruption, enormous change, is not only, but largely because of our new approach to how we can teach conducting. We <clears throat> we in, uh, if you want to study conducting or instrumental conducting like this in Norway, you need to go either to the University of Stavanger or to the Norwegian Academy of Music in Oslo. And in our traditional ways of, of teaching, which has been on campus based, and for, which is very meaningful in many ways and still is um, by all means, but for continued ed, it means that someone who's here to do a part-time course, they need to be within reach of Stavanger to study here. So the geographical impact of our program was, well, it, it could be zoomed further in. I think maybe 20, 30 kilometers in a circle around Stavanger was our impact area before we went online. But suddenly, in August 2015, when we launched the digital conducting program, we have a Nordic impact. And in fact, we have had students from all over Scandinavia in our first two years of, of in, the, in the program. And we are now developing further um, development, an EU project, will, which will take us European, or, or actually global in many ways. We, we will, the result will be in a trilingual um, platform for English, Spanish, and Brazilian. So you can only imagine how far this will reach. So the biggest change is our, is our impact. So let me tell you how we did this. So we, we realized that we want to make a flexible education, one that can be um, combined with 
being a conductor, being a professional, but going through further education. So one of the elements in our course is a MOOC. A MOOC is a massive online open course. It's, it's an acronym that has been popular for a few years, but it actually is just, it's a website. It's a, it's a website on the internet, which is then organized to make it, um, to, to promote learning. But it, I mean, essentially it's, it is a net, net uh, a website. And we have published, this is our, the theory core, the theory part of our course is then published. And we have published it as a MOOC, partially because we want to learn more about MOOCs. <laughs> so it's a little bit for our own sake. And then it turns out that the MOOC, so which by nature then is open for everyone. If you want to go in here and learn about conducting, please go ahead. You go to our uh, website and you can log on, anyone, it's free. And, uh, but it serves as a very good uh, promotional platform for us. And it has greatly increased the number of applicants to our actual programs. So it's a, it's a very, very useful way of being out there. Because the people who log in and who are not registered students, mon many of them would like to, to, to take a course. The other element, the other leg of our three legs in this program is, well, I apologize, there's a picture of me, but uh, I'm a conductor after all, myself. So, uh, but we do video lessons uh, where, where the, conduct, the students, they submit videos of themselves in, in their work, in, in their own work. So they film themselves being a conductor, they submit videos to us, and we meet online in a virtual meeting room online, it's kind of like Skype, and uh, we give them individual lessons which is something we usually do on campus, then we sit next to each other <laughs> and watch a video screen sometimes. But here we sit next to each other in a virtual video room. To facilitate this, also part of the innovation in our project was that we, it's not really shown in this illustration, but we use what's called Telestrator technology. It's the, it's the ability to use graphics, to apply graphics, written or drawn graphics on top of a live video feed. So, if you've seen the sports uh, casts, you've seen it. They say the footballer, sh he should have passed out on the left wing, and then they draw a, an arrow on top of the movement. So this is the technology that we use because we find it very useful in illustrating conducting um, uh, principles when, you, when we teach. And usually in, on the on-campus program, we sit next to each other and we do like, you have to do this and blah, blah, blah. But we needed some way of strengthening the communication. So we used... Telestrator technology to achieve this. And then thirdly, and I think th last but not least, the third element of our course, our program, is uh, on campus. We actually use traditional meets uh, in the program. So it's, it's a two-third digital course and one-third analog. So our students have to come for five days in August. That's when we start. And then they come one weekend in January and one weekend in May. And the weekend in May is also their final practical exam. And that ends their one-year part-time course. So this is a hybrid education. We market it as a digital conducting program, but in fact it is a, well, two-thirds digital, which is pretty good, I think. But it's, uh, this is one of our results. As I said, our main findings in this, doing this now for for some years, is the impact of the technology to erase geographical obstacles. It makes, makes us close. We've had, we had one student up in, in Varde, up in, in, uh, in Finnmark, who normally would never be able to access continued education in conducting. She, she, she got an offer that was normally not available. We had one in, uh, in Rendalen, which is uh, in the central uh, Norway. And she had to go to her mother-in-law's office at the, uh, the municipal house, Kommunehuse, because that's where we had the, the best internet in town. <laughs> so we made it work. Uh, uh, but the, the, also the, the ge geographical reach, but also so the, the, the uh, democratization of education. We, we made it accessible to many people who have never in reality, been um, uh, reached by this. 
the other results which I want to share with you is that the initial cost of developing this is quite high. It cost us about 2 million kroner to develop the course and, the, and the, the content. But then the running costs are actually quite, quite good until we have to revise it, until at some point we will have to modernize it, then another cost will incur. But I think this, I say this, I look now here at the leaders of the university, because this is very interesting, because we need to have uh, incentives and means to develop these startups. And one, once they're going, they're actually quite uh, self-sufficient. Uh, self but the initial cost, and we got the support from the Norges Universitet, the Norwegian Agency for uh, Digitalization and Technology in Higher Education. This is how we achieved it. Um, then I want to share you some numbers. And this is, a, this is from the survey that we've done with our students who have completed the program. And, uh, we're, well, we asked them to grade, grade the, their own learning outcome. And you can see one is, the, is, is least good and five is the best. You can see in the on-campus um, activities, they, they grade rather high our learning outcome. This is their subjective personal view of, of a learning outcome. Um, of course, the video lessons are very high. I think that's obviously it's individual uh, guidance, very, very, very powerful and, and very expensive. Also, very, it's a big resource. But the big surprise here, in many ways, is the MOOC, which actually scores really, really well. Remember, this is a self-pacing, self-going sort of kind of dead zone of the of the course. It's standalone. It's 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 on the internet. It doesn't have human interaction, and this I think is leads us to our, our, our main, I, I think the main sort of finding, and that should be interesting to other people who want to get into this kind of education, is that this blended learning, this hybrid, the, 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 the combination of online and on-campus teaching forms is very powerful. And in, in, in fact, the, the different elements, they support and strengthen each other. So the total sum is more than each component by itself. And I think that's a very, very powerful um, uh, lesson. I think also, clearly, I mean, we do have individual lessons. So each student is, they really, they are seen. I mean, it's not that like, they feel that they're being seen by the teachers. <laughs> they actually are. But this is the big challenge in, in any kind of key teaching environment, um, for the students to feel appreciated, feeling seen, feeling included. So, this hybrid solution, at least, is a very, very good step in achieving that, which normally is a big challenge. And in online courses, the dropout numbers are usually very, very high. We have yet to have a dropout. We have 100% completion rates, which is uh, very, very unusual, I have to say. Um, so finally, then, what's the future for us? Well, we've seen this, we, we see the power of this. Uh, it's very, 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 it's a very good concept. We're looking into other areas where we can apply many of the same principles. We have uh, our digital conducting studies, which we launched in 15. Then we have the, the school conductors program, which was financed, the development cost was financed by the Norwegian Band Federation, because they really said, we need school, the Corps Dirigenter, to improve. So they... So they said, Let's, we'll pay for it as long as you can run it, which is excellent for us. We, we, the, the, as I said, the initial cost is, is significant, but the running is, is okay. Uh, we just started last week a new EU project called Conduct It, where we're going European or global in a way. Global is an exaggeration. We're English, Brazilian, Spanish. It's going to be it. No Chinese, no uh, other languages. But uh, we're developing this. We are a jazz department, are looking at in how into how improvisation can be taught in similar ways. And we do really, really want to see if our PPU, at some, to some degree, our ped practical pedagogical um, education could be shaped or developed into this. These are our specific ideas right now. We have more long-term ideas where, at some point, if we have enough building blocks, if we, if, if we think of this as one Lego block each, then at some point, maybe in a distant future, you can 
compose your own degree program from a number of building blocks? This is a question we, we're asking ourselves. Is that a meaningful way of thinking of education? We don't know. There are many questions in this. But this is certainly uh, a path. We see a strong path forward for us. So this is a picture of our analog existence, which as I just want to point out at the end as a sort of finishing point that it is the root of our digital presence. And the, the fact that we have combined the two has given us a very powerful tool of modern education. So thank you very much.